Hello, my name is Nitya Panupa, the Executive Director of the Institute of HIV Research and Innovation, or IHRI, which is based in Bangkok, Thailand. It is my great pleasure to share data and some thoughts around new PrEP options for HIV prevention with all of you today. In this talk, I will touch briefly on new PrEP products in the pipeline, and then we'll focus on long-acting products in the market, which are the piverine, intravaginal ring, and injectable carbotegravir. And then I will end by discussing some implementation considerations of these long-acting PrEP. Among countries in the Asia-Pacific, PrEP um, scale up has been varied. Following Australia, Thailand, and Vietnam rank second and third in the number of cumulative PrEP users of more than um, 30,000 individuals by the first quarter of this calendar year. This was followed by Nepal, Taiwan, and the Philippines, uh, Myanmar, and India, which have from 1,500 to uh, 4,400 cumulative PrEP users. Thailand and Vietnam um, share similarity in oral PrEP scale up as the main service delivery model successfully implemented is currently through a community led or to be more specific key population led um, service delivery model. There are many new PrEP products in research pipeline, as you can see here. And to focus on those in clinical phases, um, they come in several delivery systems from oral pill, um, intramuscular injection, or subcutaneous injection um, through intravaginal ring, uh, vaginal insert, vaginal um, gel, vaginal film, enema, and implants. The, there are also um, a few um, what is called the multi-purpose um, prevention technologies uh, products, which mainly combine ARV and contraceptive drugs in a ring or in a pill. To focus on those which are long-acting PrEP products, um, prior to December last year, Isletravia, which is a non-nucleoside reverse uh, transcriptase translocation inhibitor, was one of the most exciting products, both as a once monthly pill and as a yearly implant. Um, however, um, all Isletravia studies were currently stopped or on hold due to observations of decreases in total lymphocyte count and CD4 T cell count among participants. Um, then the broadly neutralizing antibody studies are in preclinical phase after we learned last year from the AMP study that VRCO1 does not offer sufficient protection against a broad range of HIV and a combination of BNACs um, is likely needed to achieve um, broad protection. We will um, talk more about Dapurine intravaginal ring, which is an NNRTI, and injectable um, carbotegravir, which is an integrase inhibitor. But um, Lenacapavia, uh, which is a capsid inhibitor, is likely uh, to become the most exciting product we are waiting for since it can be injected subcutaneously every six months. Now let's talk more about the purine, the purine ring. The purine is a, uh, an NNRTI made into a vaginal ring, which is a flexible silicone ring that a woman can insert into the vagina for monthly um, material protection. It received an approval from EMA and was included on WHO pre-qualification um, list uh, since 2020. And last year, um, WHO recommended the purine ring as an additional prevention um, choice for cisgender women pulled result from two RCTs, which are Aspire and Ring, showed an overall 29% reduction in HIV incidence. A higher 61% efficacy was documented among women aged more than 25 years, uh, with significant relationship, um, as we all know, between adherence and prevention efficacy. The open label extension studies, which are Hope and Dream, um, demonstrated an effectiveness um, range from 39% to 62%. Uh, and there was no increased risk of any RTI resistance um, with the use of ring and the product is safe and well tolerated. 
In terms of acceptability, it was high at 87%. And it is important to note that um, women expressed that partner influence and perceived community acceptance um, can affect ring use. The price was set at, at eight US dollar and the ring service is expected to require fewer health um, system resources than oral prep as it is likely suitable for pharmacy, community and self-care delivery models. Now for cabotegravir, this is an integrase inhibitor made into a 3 ml 600 milligram intramuscular injection, which needs to be given every um, two months after an initial one month interval uh, for the first two injections. Um, two RCTs, HPT and 083 and 084, demonstrated that both CAP-LA and Delhi oral TDF FTC um, were highly effective in preventing HIV. And both studies found that CAPLA was superior um, to daily oral TDF FTC. The HP10 OA3 study enrolled um, almost 4,500 MSM and transgender women. Um, and 12% of these participants are um, transgender women. And they found 66% HIV risk reduction while um, um, the HP10 OA4 study enrolled um, more than 3,000 um, cisgender uh, women in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa and found 89% reduction in HIV acquisition. HIV incidence, uh, as you can see in uh, the TDF FTC arm in both studies uh, was less than 2% per year and almost all were due to inadequate adherence um, as confirmed by um, the dry blood spot um, TFV uh, diphosphate level. Um, and um, during this blinded phase of HP10 OA3, we uh, can see that um, less than three quarters of participants in the TDF FTC arm um, had the level which um, correlates with um, taking at least four pills per week. Both studies also found that injectable carbotegravir was safe. Injection site reactions was reported by 81% of MSM and transgender women in the HP10083 study and 2.3% stopped um, the product uh, due to this um, reaction. However, among cisgender women in HP10084 studies, um, injection site reactions uh, are only occurred in 32% and no one discontinued um, CAP-LA. And other adverse events occurred with similar frequency frequency in both the carbotegravir and the TDF FTC arms. There are a few other interesting points um, to discuss here. There were six incident um, infections in HPT-083 and two in HPT-084, um, despite target plasma carbotegravir concentrations. And uh, this is the subject of investigation as of now. So far, there's no evidence to support the concern around um, inst resistance found um, and, and those um, I mean, during the long uh, tail phase of um, CAP-LA. Um, however, the inst resistance found tended to develop when um, viremic escape occurred at um, high carbotegravir concentrations. And this is true uh, both in the prevalent case, uh, meaning that um, carbotegravir was initiated among those uh, who had acute HIV infection which was missed um, at, the, uh, at the initiation, as well as those who are incident uh, cases. And um, one other important um, finding here is that um, CAP-LA can delay the detection of um, HIV infection. And um, this is true for both prevalent and incident cases with a median uh, time of 62 day delay in prevalent cases and 79 day delay in incident um, cases. And this is due to prolonged suppression um, of viral replication, uh, which delayed um, antibody expression. And, um, therefore, in order to allow earlier or earliest detection uh, of HIV infection, the open label phase of HPTN 083 will use viral load testing as a primary screen for HIV infection. In terms of accessibility and preference, carbotegravir as uh, in its current form um, studied in HPTN um, 083 and 084 is that it's an it's intramuscular injection to gluteal muscle, uh, which means that they cannot be used by um, those, especially transgender women uh, who had buttock implants and cannot be uh, self-injected. 
And the price is likely very unaffordable in low and middle income um, countries, unless very cheap um, generic products um, can be made available. The current market price in the US uh, of Apricute is um, to more than 22,000 USD per year. And this is compared to um, less than 60 USD per year for um, daily oral TDF FTC. And lastly, not everyone likes getting injections. Uh, just around three quarters of transgender women in our tangerine clinic who ever used PrEP express interest in injectable uh, CAPLA. And among HPT and OA3 participants at our site at IHRI, um, although 97% of those in uh, CAPLA um, intended to continue carbotecravia, only less than two thirds of those in the oral TDF FTC um, um, intended to switch to CAPLA. Data from the first year of uh, now, uh, we are in the open level phase of HPT and OA3 showed um, that CAVLA efficacy, prevention efficacy, remained very similar to the blinded phase at 67%. Adherence to at least four pills per week among those taking oral TDF FTC now in the open level phase, however, dropped from 73% to 59%. And um, this point to the fact that um, even uh, if we have um, Cap LA injection, um, we still cannot avoid the correlation in between the adherence to um, getting product administration and prevention efficacy. Now, should we consider integrating CAPLA into our PrEP program? Um, in Thailand, more than 80% of current PrEP users receive PrEP from key population lay providers in key population led clinics, which um, does not have um, doctors or nurses within the clinic, but we receive um, virtual support from doctors. And although Thailand is uh, second only after Australia um, with the largest number of PrEP users, users in Asia Pacific. We were only successful in getting just above one fifth uh, of people who would benefit from PrEP uh, to be aware and make decision to um, start oral PrEP with continuous efforts made over almost eight years um, after PrEP was first recommended um, in our national guidelines. Um, and therefore, more efforts and more innovations are certainly needed. The KP-led PrEP service in our country is operated using the three principles uh, shown here. The first one is the demedicalization, which is to identify the elements of PrEP uh, service, which can be shifted or can be shared with KP-led providers um, or to share with the clients uh, themselves. Um, and the second uh, principle is the simplification, which is to find the less complex ways to deliver services while uh, maintaining efficacy and quality. And lastly is the differentiation principle, which is to think about the who, the when, the where, the what, um, the, the, those uh, building blocks uh, of the differentiated service delivery um, using a client-centered approach. And now thinking about CAPLA integration into KP-led PrEP um, service as an example uh, to start discussion around the implementation challenges of long-acting PrEP product, we can see that uh, CAPLA will bring us towards Remedicalization, not demedicalization, as product as administration role will now have to be shifted back from KP lab providers to nurses, uh, to doctors. And we still don't know uh, if thigh injection, if reduced volume injection, or reduced risk injection, or subcutaneous injection will be made available, uh, which will lead us to uh, see that CAP LA uh, can possibly be made for self injection. And Instead of simplification, CAPLA actually comes with more complexity as HIV testing algorithm will need HIV RNA. And um, we still don't know if third or fourth generation rapid test or third or fourth generation self-testing or pooled uh, point of care HIV RNA um, can be used or not. And lastly, there are challenges with various user patterns with more PrEP products. We still don't know how to handle more frequent uh, CAPLA visits or how to handle switching in between the oral PrEP product and CAPLA products and, or how to handle the misinjection visit. And if this happens, who can handle it and where um, and how? 
Um, and even for oral prep, we still uh, need to optimize oral prep program and WHO will launch its technical brief on differentiated and simplified um, prep during its 2022 in Montreal. Uh, the oral prep urgently needs to be simplified and uh, even driven prep um, right now can be offered not only to MSM, but to all people assigned male at birth who are not taking gender affirming hormones, uh, which uh, means that cisgender men who have sex with men, who have sex with women, who have sex with both men and women, um, including transgender uh, women who are not taking um, gender affirming hormones uh, can take event driven PrEP. Um, event driven PrEP can also be safely offered um, to those with HBV infection. For daily PrEP, um, now the start and stopping rules uh, can be uh, simplified uh, by uh, looking at um, the, the people who are eligible for event driven PrEP who can start and stop um, PrEP similarly to those who are taking event driven PrEP, meaning that they can um, start with two pills and can stop um, two days after the last exposure, even if they choose to take daily PrEP. And for other people who are not um, cisgender uh, men, uh, not taking gender affirming hormones, um, the rules is to start um, PrEP seven days before potential exposure and continue uh, daily PrEP for seven days after the last exposure. For creatinine um, clearance, um, right now the recommendation is that there's no need to check for creatinine at baseline um, for those who age more than um, uh, less than um, 30 and those who did not have um, kidney comorbidities. And uh, even if uh, it needs to be done at baseline, it can be done at any time within three months of PrEP initiation. So we do not have to wait for creatinine results prior to starting PrEP um, anymore. There's also no need to check uh, for uh, creatinine at PrEP follow-up unless the baseline creatinine clearance is less than 90. And lastly, for hepatitis B and C, uh serology. This can be checked at any time within the first three months of PrEP initiation. Again, this uh, we do not have to wait for hepatitis B or hepatitis C test results prior to initiate someone on PrEP. And for uh, HCV, we recommend that yearly um, testing for those with higher likelihood of exposure. Now to think of other long acting PrEP products beyond CAP-LA, we can see common implementation um, considerations and how each of them score in certain aspects. Comparing oral PrEP and CAP-LA, although it looks like um, CAP-LA scores better in terms of the frequency of product use, but since we haven't had experience in integrating an injectable product in PrEP clinic before, we still don't know who can be the injector and how to support adherence to um, clinic visit, which uh, will now be very important because um, um, coming to the clinic equals product administration. And we still don't know if we will have enough money to uh, test for HIV and STI more often or to uh, um, test for HIV um, infection using um, HIV RNA. And um, lastly, with almost no possibility uh, of us uh, having the generic products of Carbotegravia, um, in our country in the near future, we may have to admit that we don't see much opportunity for scale up. And we hope that other long acting prep products in the pipeline will um, consider these implementation challenges when um, designing clinical trials, kind of start with the end in mind. And therefore we should be able um, in the future to move forward more quickly from clinical trials to implementation research and to the actual implementation. I would like to end with a few thoughts. Um, we have discussed quite a few implementation challenges already. However, the uh, key challenge um, here is actually the availability of the product. Long acting prep will be uh, very unlikely to become true choice uh, without generic products, not even in high income um, countries, as we can um, see that even in Australia, um, Cap LA will be positioned as um, second line uh, prep for those who cannot tolerate or cannot use um, oral prep product. And creating demand for a uh, true choice, a uh, true choice for HIV prevention is also crucial, very crucial. Long acting product and its users uh, can be stigmatized, especially if um, long acting product is uh, positioned as second line uh, prep. 
because we know that oral PrEP users is um, stigmatized as PrEP is related to sex, is related to sexual pleasure, which are um, so much devalued um, in our region. And therefore, individuals wanting to use injectable PrEP can be further stigmatized as they can be seen as being irresponsible in sex and um, even more irresponsible in just taking pills. And um, the research studies on self-injection or reduced volume injection or reduced visit injection or on alternative injection sites, uh, such as on thigh muscle or subcutaneous injection are all urgently needed in order to plan uh, for implementation um, because the implementers will need to know what options will become available uh, and when uh, in order for us to be able to plan uh, the implementation research or to adapt our implementation research in real time and to prepare many other things like countries um, service delivery system, guidelines, um, payment mechanism and regulations or policy beforehand. And um, lastly, I'd like to say that um, things uh, may seem not feasible until we do it. And it is just that this time we want to do it with a better plan than what we uh, have had before for oral prep implementation. And thank you very much for listening. <laughs>